right now. And Michael and Lauren, the floor is all yours. Okay, I think we're good. Can everybody, um, everybody see my screen here? Yep, good looks go? good. Great, all right, thanks Evan. Hey everybody, um, already seeing a ton of familiar faces here on this call, so I really appreciate everybody being here. Um, as Evan said, this is our marketing and communication session of the tennis conference. You know, many of you have been on a lot of these sessions uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's been great seeing so many familiar faces, people mostly from middle states, but a lot um, from beyond, you know, facilities and organizations from really all over the country, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm Michael Gladys. Uh, most of you, a lot of you on the call know me. And then um, Lauren uh, Simeone is also here to present today. Um, some of you haven't had the, the pleasure to meet Lauren yet. She started earlier this year with our team, uh, right before uh, a lot of the shutdown stuff happened, but uh, excited to have her here. And then uh, the secret uh, force behind the, the chat and uh, behind the, the, the black screen there is Marge McGann, who I know many of you know. So she's gonna be helping to move the presentation along as well um, and kind of communicate some questions and whatnot that come, come through. So um, that's, that's our team here for USTA Middle States. Uh, we're also lucky we've got a couple guests joining us today to talk through their experience with uh, marketing, PR, content, you know, how they do it um, through, their, you know, through their facilities, their, their organizations. And that's uh, Sanjin Kunovac and uh, Devin Rubino from um, Sanjin's from Legacy and uh, Devin from Mercer County Park. So we're gonna bring them in in a little bit to talk with them. Um, and just a couple things as we go through, I wanna share the, the agenda for the day. Um, gonna talk through some of the marketing tools that a lot of you shared either interest in talking more about on this session or that you communicated that you use pretty frequently. Um, have a conversation about some real life examples, achievable goals that you can be setting, um, run through a couple of best practices, tips, um, some updates from USTA marketing standpoint, and then also uh, questions and next steps. And then full disclosure, uh, although I do have uh, some help here today, uh, there is a very young baby, a toddler and a dog all within about 20 feet of me. So any background noise, uh, just apologize ahead of time for that. Um, as we go through. So uh, I realize everybody's in a very different spot. Um, just uh, hopefully this gives you some good things to think about and uh, we'll look to communicate with you moving forward. So who's on this call today? Uh, we started looking through the, the attendee list as people were signing in. Um, we've got people from all sorts of different backgrounds, you know, tennis directors, EDs, teaching pros, volunteers, um, coaches of so many different levels uh, and many, many more people that, you know, that titles we couldn't even, aren't even listing here. But, um, you know, th there's, this is really important to, no matter what your role is in tennis, uh, marketing, PR, these are things that uh, are really important to you and that sometimes you feel you don't always have a ton of time for. Um, so we've got a lot in common here just with uh, who we are and what we're doing. Um, and with just the fact that this can be kind of confusing stuff sometimes. And uh, as you can see from, uh, from the famous Michael Scott with this quote, uh, sometimes there's, there's a lot happening. You're not quite sure, you know, where to start or if you're pretty, you know, pretty active and engaged with marketing and PR efforts, um, trying to figure out, you know, where to move forward and and what to do next. Um, there's a lot, there's always a lot happening and so many things changing in this, you know, in this world of, of marketing and digital. And, and for those who have been um, in these positions for a long time, you've seen that uh, really moving, moving a lot over the last several years. And then again, moving forward. So um, there's a handful of things we all have in common. These are a few quotes that we got uh, when you, uh, a handful of you submitted your survey ahead of time, but people saying we want to keep up with the trends, um, sometimes struggle to find time for PR or marketing with an already busy schedule. 
uh, could use help knowing how to approach media outreach, how to connect with a larger audience due to the demise of the local newspaper. That's certainly a common trend. And then want some help to develop a regular uh, marketing schedule. So um, we got a lot of things in common. We have a lot of things that we can go over today. And with that, um, I'm going to move it over to Lauren, who I think is going to uh, move this presentation forward. Yes, thanks, Michael. Um, so again, we'd like to thank you all for taking the time to fill out the survey before our session today. And like Michael said, for those of you who didn't have a, ch have a chance to read through the questions, um, the main objective of the survey that we sent out was that we wanted to get your thoughts on your biggest successes, your needs, and your goals from a marketing standpoint. So those quotes that Michael had read on the slide previously were quotes directly from you. And so the general consensus from your feedback resulted in many of the same goals and opportunities. Like here, like sometimes you're struggling to find the time for marketing and PR with an already jam-packed schedule. You're sometimes spread too thin with too many things to do. So generally speaking, you would like to stay more relevant um, and stay relevant within your current or potential audience. So you want to stay more visible to your audience. Um, just because that being said, just because your courts are full today doesn't necessarily mean that you'll retain those customers in the future. You want to continue to be relevant and become more relevant with your audience. Um, and then with that being said, you're also looking for quick and easy, more achievable ways to develop content and improve your marketing and PR. Uh, you have so many great players, coaches, volunteers, and offerings that you want the industry to know about and a wider audience. So later on in this session, we'll be diving a little bit deeper into some strategies and ideas on how to address these needs and accomplish your marketing goals. The next slide here. And Lauren, just to follow up on that about that, that last point here, I think a lot of times, a lot of times it can be a little overwhelming to think about how to, how to develop content and how to think of, you know, what you even have to share out there. Um, we get a ton of questions about that, but with so many players and coaches and, and people that, that you're involved with, everybody has a story. Um, everybody has something really unique to share and offer. And you as an organization, you know, you've got your little corner that um, is really special about you. And those are all things that, you know, as organizations, we should be bragging about um, and putting out there for people to see. Right, right. And now before we go into some specific examples um, of some content development ideas, we want to highlight the basic tools that are out there and available for you to use. Uh, so listed here are some of the responses that you submitted to us through that survey. And these are some of the tools that you're using and we can take a deeper look in how to best uh, utilize them. So starting with here, we have social media. It can even expand beyond the realm of just posting on Facebook or Instagram and like organically posting on, on those pages, organically meaning you post your own content on your own social media channels. Um, there's LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, different blogging platforms um, that are out there for you to utilize. And with those platforms, you can also use paid advertising on social media um, where you can target different audiences and different demographics. Uh, another tool that you mentioned you're using effectively is your website. You're enhancing it. You're making a great source of information for your members and potential customers uh, to learn more about your organization and programming. Um, some of you are utilizing search tools and relevance with uh, search engine optimization or SEO. Um, basically, you're focusing on driving your website to show higher results on higher search results on sites like Google or Yahoo. Um, search en engines are a very common way that people um, get to your website. So implementing it properly can definitely help you with exposure. Um, another avenue providers are using, like yourself are using, is paid advertising. You're connecting with local magazines, newspapers, blogs to get your name out there and you can continue to use that. Uh, you use community-based marketing and you're like hanging flyers around the town or in parks um, or in, the, in community centers to give you more exposure there as well. Uh, there's graphic and flyers with 
print and digital that you're using your own or you're using uh, USTA, the USTA marketing generator, um, which will show you how to access and um, create some content in, in that generator later on in our session today. Um, we, have mark, uh, we have PR and media, email messaging. Uh, you have membership and player-based email messaging with your consistently um, providing news updates, newsletters, press releases. You're getting that information out to your existing members. And lastly, uh, there's word of mouth, which is very popular and effective way to gain new, new customers and retain, retain your customers and members too. Um, many of you mentioned this on, on the survey as one of your main strategies that your organization is using. Um, so it can continue to be a huge part of your marketing. Now, granted, some of these things are done on a larger scale, like handle that at the organizational level. Um, and some is, some is done individually, like a teaching pro utilizing their own social media channels. So now I'm going to kick it back over to Michael, where we can hear from a few um, real life examples and experiences from um, with marketing, PR, and content development. Perfect. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, I, you kind of alluded to this. There's there's a lot of different levels of this going on out there in the industry. I know um, just seeing the names of people in this session, I know there's some people that have uh, at their disposal like an entire marketing department who is really educated and maybe putting money behind search engines. And then there's others that are really kind of doing it um, all on their own. And maybe they you know, maybe just to get an email out once a month to a membership base is a lot of work. Um, and it's okay, all those different levels are fine. And that's going to apply to what we're talking about here. But don't ever feel like because there's all of these tools out there that we're showing you, you need to be using all of these things. Just a good idea of um, some examples of what are being used and um, things to think about as far as if you can implement them um, moving forward through, you know, throughout your marketing. So as Laura mentioned, we've got a couple of guests here. Um, uh, Sanjin from Legacy, Devin from Mercer County Park. Um, I know you guys are available here on the side. If you wanna go ahead and just take yourselves um, off mute and um, turn on your cameras. Um, we're gonna talk to, talk to these two for a few minutes about how they approach this stuff. Um, just a quick, quick intro. Um, Sanjin, uh, Sanjin's in a really unique role uh, at Legacy in which he's, you know, so, so involved with everything that goes on on the court um, and managing a lot of that. But he also is responsible for so much of what you see out there um, as far as media hits and stuff in the news, um, content that you see, you know, published on their channels. Sanjin's really involved with a lot of that. Um, he's also, for those of you who uh, are Game of Thrones fans, I'm going to embarrass him, and uh, he, he was a star in the last season of Game of Thrones. Uh, so you can, can re-watch and see if you can find him. Uh, and then uh, Devin, who also just joined us, uh, she was our uh, teaching professional of the year for the section this past year, um, has been involved in Mercer County for a really long time and has done a, a great job of utilizing her own social media to, uh, to kind of help show out show what she's doing um keep connected to her players and those parents um and see you know how they can expand that way so um Sanjin, i'm just going to start with you uh if that's all right i mean in general can you just share a little bit about with so much on your plate kind of how you go about multitasking and just maybe your approach to 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 media and and pushing content out there into the public Sure. Thank you, Michael. First of all, can you hear me and see me? Yeah, we're, we can see you great. All right. Thank you guys for, uh, for having me here and for everyone on the, on the call. Um, you know, the first thing I, I wanted to say, you, when it came to marketing, it's not something that I wanted to do. We had few different marketing interns um, and kind of revolving chair that it didn't work out. And what ended up happening is that, uh, you know, things still needed to get done. And, uh, you know, I took it upon myself to kind of start learning and start looking at different social media influencers and things like that to get better. So by no means am I, am I an expert. I will tell everyone um, what we've done in the last six to nine months. Um, and that's kind of been a, a really, uh, I've received a lot of positive feedback from, from our clients, our kids and the adults. So, um, you know, just to give everyone background, if you're not familiar with Legacy, 
Um, we have eight indoor court and eight outdoor courts. We have a lot of uh, kids and a lot of different uh, uh, demographics. We have high performance, we have recreational, we have a little bit of an adult program, we have a grassroots program. So we I always have to target a, a wide base, which is something I'm really proud of the organization, but sometimes it becomes difficult to see who you're trying to share the information with. Um, and so one of the main things that um, we constantly talk about, or I always talk about is, is not what, what do we want to post, is what do they want to see. So what did, what did they want to see, meaning whoever we're targeting, um, you know, it's not promoting that we have a, a, a special or a special clinic, is, you know, is this something that this particular group is going to be interested in? Um, and, you know, with that, uh, we kind of always also talk about different platforms, um, and this has helped us a lot. Um, I'm sure, uh, you know, this seems maybe seems simple, but it took us a long time to get to this point is knowing who's our customer, what do they want to see, and then understanding the different platforms between being on the website, uh, having an email list, um, having an Instagram and Facebook, which are completely different. So just to kind of give you an example for us, our website is pretty much, uh, you know, like concrete. What's there is information that you need to find if you're looking for prices, when are the clinics available, and general information on our structure. So that's something that, you know, we update very little, but it's very important that it's consistent and it's there. Then our mailing list is anytime we're promoting a new clinic or we're ending, talking about summer camp, fall programming, this goes out to everyone. And, you know, this might have a lot of words and uh, it's, it has to be very descriptive sometimes because it has a lot of information. So I would say out of all the outlets that has the, you know, the most information. Then when it goes to Instagram, um, that's something that we've found out that it's mostly kids. Most of our demographic are, are the kids that we coach. So it's a little bit more playful, a little bit more fun. And then we have Facebook, which is more of the adults, whether it's the adults in our program or the kids, uh, parents of those kids and what information they wanna see. Um, and then obviously you have YouTube, which if you have a big clip, you put it there. The reason I say that is because we used to just like post everything on all the areas. Like we have, we're promoting something new. It would be an email, Instagram, Facebook. And we found out that not only was it not effective for that particular cause, but more importantly, it didn't create consistency in what people wanted us to see. You know, so it's if you go to, uh, you know, a Serena's website you're, or Instagram, you're expecting to see tennis, you know, and every once in a while, there's something different. If you're going to something else, you know, a restaurant, you're expecting to see that. So trying to create consistency in what we show in each one of those um, uh, platforms. And then, you know, with that consistency, it comes the other side of consistency, consistency which is co taking co constant action. And in the past, and this is the last thing you know, I'll say, is that in the past, we used to work really hard on trying to create this flyer or this perfect video, and then we would post it and we would be so excited, and then we realized in three days, no one cares. And so now it's more about uh, you know, using the stories on Instagram, if you guys are familiar with, and constantly posting the kids. And for us, a lot of, most of it is the kids, catching the kids doing the stuff right and tagging them in it. And then every single day we want them to be like, did I make it on Legacy's Instagram? And I think that particular consistency in what we post and daily consistency has really increased our users. Like nine months ago, we had around 800. And now I just checked we're 1,080. So almost 300 users in six months, which is a lot. And the impact uh, that we've seen in our program has been great as well. Obviously, we still do in-person things and having flyers and uh, one other things we've created a TV, we have we bought a TV that kind of sh showcases the different flyers. So instead of posting things everywhere, we have a screen that rotates, and I'm sure other clubs have that as well. We just, you know, we started that a year ago, and that's been pretty helpful as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that was too much or not enough, but that's that's, that's great. And you know, you hit on something really important there. I think with talking about the variety of the outlets and how you can target within those, you know, making sure that the messaging, um, it needs to be different for everything. You know, you're not going to put the same wording up on a website that you're going to put out uh, on, on an Instagram post, or you're not going to use the same image in an email that you might use for a Snapchat filter that you create for an event. 
Um, yeah. And then kind of to the, the point of the website is people tend to, people will sometimes um, post something up onto the website um, and that's great. And then just kind of walk away and expect that people are going to find it. And it's yeah. very rare for people, you know, to just be, oh, let me go check out, you know, this organization's website and see what they've done this week. You know, that's, that's never something from the customer view that's really going to happen. If there's information on that website that you want people to see, you have to drive them to it through other avenues. So drive them to it through social media, through um, posts, uh, through, through an email, by simply telling them about it <laughs> in person. You know, any way you can get in front of them to, to share that information um, and tell them where to go is, is really important. And then the last thing I think, talking about all the, the kids, Sanjin, um, that you're posting, that's also just really great customer service. Like that's really great for those kids. They feel um, accomplished when they're, when they're featured um, through your social media stuff. Um, they share that with their friends, their parents share with their friends. And that kind of dives into that word of mouth that, that Lauren mentioned um, a couple of slides ago of, you know, the best advertising a lot of times are, well, oh, this friend, a friend of mine plays tennis. Oh, look at this. They're being featured here. That's so cool. Let me check that out. You know, so a lot of the stuff you talked about really, uh, I think, molds together nicely. Um, and it kind of plays off of, uh, plays off of the other. No, I agree. Devin, um, you've got some, a, a bit of a, a different, a little bit of a different role, a little bit of a different experience in how kind of you manage uh, social media as a teaching pro and, and from your own perspective. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you approach it? Sure. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me? Can you see me? Yep. Can you see me right now? Um, hey guys, huge shout out to all the teaching professionals out there. Um, those of you who don't know me, I work for a county facility, so we don't really have a website. We don't have a lot of different platforms that they use, you know, bios and stuff about the teaching professionals, about what we offer. You know, we just, we're a part of a, a huge, you know, we have facilities all over. I work for the park commission. So personally, I felt I wanted to do something to share what I do so that everybody else could see it. You know, I, um, I love how, you know, having the Twitter and the Facebook and the Instagram, I'm like, you know what, a few years ago, I said, why not share what I do and like my creativity, my ideas. We don't have anything with the Park Commission, you know, so I took it upon myself. And personally, I mean, during this pandemic, I struggled mentally as a teaching professional because I could not teach. I could not do what I loved. So during the pandemic, I literally, I went out there and I, I posted these videos because I felt like I needed some kind of connection with my students, with, with the people that I would see on an everyday you know, basis. And that gave me that comfort. If I didn't have that social media outlet, if I could not do that, you know, not being able to teach, that was you know, a huge struggle for me. And I don't know if the other teaching professionals, you know, if you felt that way or, you know, I feel I was able to, you know, do the videos, do Zoom call meetings with my, my kids, you know, I'd set up meetings. And I feel like that was huge for me as a teaching professional. Um, I feel also, you know, as a teaching professional and not having the sources, you know, that a lot of the other clubs have, you know, me posting, you know, the different videos and, and games and activities. I don't know. I feel like that. I want to share what I do with all the other players and students. And I want to impact, even if I can impact one person on Facebook, a friend of mine, that's like, oh, wow, that's, that's a tennis game. I want to get my kids involved in that. Look at the energy and look at, you know, what she's doing. Um, that, that's my insight, I feel with that. So I don't know for a huge, I just want to say a tip too to anyone out there that's teaching by themselves and it's independent, you know, being, being involved and not just out on the tennis court or at work, you know, I'm not just at work. I want to do it around my life. I want to post as much as I can and, and say, look, you know, this wonderful thing I've been doing or this game or this drill and showing the kids happiness and, you know, it's really, really remarkable. I don't know what, 
I would do if I did not have that platform, you know, the social media platform. I think it's, it's an incredible source. And um, I feel like it really gets us involved as teaching professionals, if we can utilize that. Um, I, I would love to have, actually, this is something I would love to get some feedback too. You know, I'm always getting good feedback. It's like, I don't, I don't care. I want to grow as a teaching professional. I want people, other teaching professionals, other people to ask questions, you know, because I know we're the, we're the foundation of this game. So this is something that I feel in my heart that I was so grateful that Mike had asked me to come on to this, this call. And um, personally, you know, after everything that happened a few past months, it was a huge, like a, a epiphany for me, knowing that I can do other things other than just being out there with the kids. And that meant a lot. So I just feel for all the teaching pros out there, you know, show yourself, show what you can do, be involved, love it, show what you love. I want to share as much as I can with everybody out there, my ideas, my creativity. I want to grow the game as a teaching professional. And um, yeah, in my heart, I'm just, I'm so grateful that we have social media and that I was able just to do the little things I did as my own, you know, teaching professional by myself. Um, yeah, and I think Sanson's incredible, huge role model. <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you so much. And I think real quick, be involved, teaching professionals, show every, you know, show what you can do. So these kids, these kids are going to see these parents and, you know, I want to impact and be a role model. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's great, Devin. Really, we really appreciate everything you're doing. And we were so happy to have you on the call today. Um, do you think you could go on a little bit more about the response you're getting from the kids on what you're posting about? Yeah, I mean, a lot of, I have a lot of friends that say, oh, wow, you know, you're, you're using that. Can you do that for like a soccer or a different sport? And I'm like, absolutely. You can modify and you can, you know, cause I, a lot of tips I use with my, um, one of my huge mentors, Leah Friedman, who's incredible. And I'm, I'm constantly, you know, finding out stuff from other Instagram sources and other stuff and trying to modify. So yeah, a lot of people have been asking me if you could use this stuff and tweak it for like lacrosse or, you know, soccer. And I'm like, yeah, and I'll show. And yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so some, but it's all good feedback. I kind of want some, you know, constructive criticism. I want people to be like, well, why are you doing that? I know just to build myself as a teaching pro and just to get, you know, I, I would love to get some feedback that way. I always get good feedback. <laughs> so. You know what we can do, Devin, is when we, we're going to be sending some follow-up uh, emails next week. Um, for everyone who attended the session and we can talk with you about maybe including some examples of, of what you've done and even get your contact info so people could reach out. Um, Sanjay, I want to ask you one more question, but we also had a something come across the uh, come across the chat asking about um, permissions for posting photos. So um, I'll, I'll open it up to you guys. Uh, just I'll just answer real quick from our, pers our perspective is um, there are, there's a lot you can handle uh, early on um, by, you know, adding some sort of publicity or uh, marketing line to your waivers that you're using as an organization or as a teaching pro um, and putting that out there. So when, when a session sign up happens or um, when somebody, you know, comes in for the first time, um, but just, just being being honest about what you're going to use it for, make sure you, know, you do get their permission. Um, and then also, you know, if the opportunity is there, depending on what it is, uh, there's a fine line sometimes of kind of clearing it ahead of time. But every organization is a little bit different with how they work with their kids. Um, from our perspective, we do utilize waivers a good bit. Um, but I'd actually be curious, uh, Devin and Sanjin, how, how you guys work, work within that, if you're comfortable sharing. Um, Good, Sanjin. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Thank you. No, no, no problem. Either way, um, for us, um, kind of like Michael said, when you register for our programming, um, in order, it says like if we're allowed to take pictures in while you are in our facility, um, so that's kind of like the disclosure that we have ahead of time. That being said, a lot of times when we're you know posting something, um, especially for Instagram, we're always asking the kids if they want to be on it themselves because you know sometimes you have a court and you know be like all right if somebody doesn't want to be on let me know no problem and most 
I think one time I've had somebody say no, every other, they're actually excited to be on. Um, there's other times like, you know, if we post like a trophy picture that the parents are actually emailing us that versus us going and grabbing it from their Instagram. You know, we'd never want to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if that answers your, your, your question. I think that's good. And, and really, uh, if there's anybody out there, um, that, this is info we can also put into our follow-up. Um, yeah. We can always uh, help uh, people sort of start to navigate that, that question a little bit. It's always uh, obviously going to come down to the organization that has to you know, protect itself, but we can always help point you in the right direction as to how to, how to navigate that and how to kind of work those permissions. So hopefully that answered that question. Um, and then Sanjin, I know we'll, uh, we're going to let you guys go in a second, but I did want to ask you one more thing about um, some of the media hits you guys have gotten through some of like your PR and your outreach to news stations and to um, different uh, media outlets around Philadelphia. Can you talk for a minute about your approach there? Um, so each one has been different. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, it's what's kind of going on for us, particularly, we've had some kind of a, a connection, for example, uh, currently like Ann Lee, who trained with us, played the third round of the US Open this year, and she got to the Australian Open. So um, we're able to kind of get the attention for it. Sometimes people come to us. Um, other times, um, you know, we will, we will reach out and just say, hey, we have a great story to share. Uh, what do you guys think? We have different contexts like throughout the years. A lot of times they're not interested, sometimes they are. And the interesting thing about the news, what I've learned, if one is interested, they're all interested. It's like really fascinating that sometimes we'll, you know, we'll feel like we have a great story to share and we'll, you know, reach out to them and nobody's interested. And all of a sudden, if one does it, then all three of them, like, you know, Fox, NBC, ABC, they all call and, uh, and they want to be kind of do, you know, some feature of that story, whether it's like a coach or a kid doing well um, or anything like that. Yeah, great. And we're going to hit on a couple um, PR update, PR tips and kind of media stuff as we go through. So uh, I, I, yeah, that's sorry, what I'm saying. Go ahead. I'll just say for PR, and I know it's not just PR, it's everything is about relationships. And it's about having like an authentic relationship and being there not just when you need something, you mm -hmm. know, and, and developing a relationship. Like if, you know, some, let's say a news anchor does something well, for us or you know does a piece for us and then six months later they get a promotion or they do something and if you reach out to them and say congratulations or you know you develop some relationship you invite them to come play tennis um you know it's it's authentic and sometimes some people don't want that which is fine but others do appreciate it and and you know you have a relationship like right now dave leno i don't know if you guys are familiar with dave leno he he broadcasts arena's match at the u.s open and he also does a lot of different for Temple basketball and soccer. Like we really became friends. Like we talked to each other, we text, you know, we talk about his baby and things like that. And it started with something, but now it's like a real relationship. And uh, to me, not just in PR, but everything is having like authentic lifelong relationships is, is really important. Yeah, that's a good point. I think authenticity is something that can relate to every aspect of of your marketing, um, of the content you're producing, you know, anything you put out there. Um, if it's something that, that's real and it has, you know, a human interest component to it, that's the kind of stuff that really is shared and people love to see. So Sanjay and Devin, thanks so much for, uh, for talking through a, a good bit of this um, with us. Hopefully you'll stick around for the rest of the call and, uh, you know. Thank you, thank to, you, uh, Michael. Thank you everyone, Middle State. Devin, shout out to you, doing awesome stuff. Uh, we, I notice it. Um, I don't have any crit critique for you yet, but I'll look. <laughs> Great job. Thank you, everyone. Oh, take care. Everybody's going to criticize Devin, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pile on. So thanks, guys. So we're going to, um, I'm keeping an eye on the clock here. I know how valuable everyone's time is. So we want to move, move through a few more things. We might have to power through a couple slides, but um, we will certainly follow up if there's anything we don't get to that we wanted to spend time on we will and then just uh kind of shout out something we're going to do later is we will also schedule um a follow-up webinar um in the next couple months where anyone who wants to dive into any of this stuff further 
or talk more, just have conversations about it, um, we're going to set up the opportunity to do that. So, um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, what we want to hit on here is just kind of some simple tips for when we talk about content development. This was the question we got pretty much the most of, but uh, just a few questions to think about. And yes, we will share these slides. Don't feel like you have to take notes here, but um, from, you know, keeping it from a business standpoint, what are you trying to communicate with your audience? What are some of the things that you need to get out there to the people who are playing with you currently and also potential players that you have, um, you know, other people who you think you'd like to have um, getting involved or checking out your program? You know, what do you want to achieve with that? And that should be a question you're always asking, you know, what's the next step? What's the call to action? Um, doing a little bit of an internal brainstorm. This could be something you do yourself or you do with your team, but you know, what is it that makes your organization unique? You know, what stories do you have to tell? Um, I, I've seen, taking a look at the list of people who registered for this, um, and I'm not sure everyone who's on now because the list is getting longer and longer, but you know, I'll shout out a couple people. Like I know Carol McLennan who, who registered to join this call. She, um, every year they host a, uh, a, a UST national um, tournament. Uh, it's either uh, father, daughter, or, or mother, son, or, or something along those lines. And you know, that's a really unique thing that they do, um, but they do a really cool job of getting out there. Um, it's a good way to kind of mask some other stuff you're, you're sharing about your organization through a great event that you have going on. It's a great story to tell. Um, consider your media outlets. You know, what tools do you have access to? Uh, if you have a marketing team, you know, what do they, what do they have? What do they utilize the most? Um, and once you see that, you can um, figure out what it is you want to try. Uh, there's always something new out there. Um, I'm going to take a guess that probably a lot of, uh, a lot of facilities aren't super involved with, with keywords on the back end of their website or making sure that they're optimized for, for website searches. You know, that's always something that while you might not ever be able to spend all the time you want onto it um, with it, you can learn a little bit, you can ask questions and maybe figure out how to put yourself in a better spot. And these are things we can um, try to help you with from the section standpoint. If you reach out to us, we can try to point you in the right direction. Sanjin hit on targeting, making sure you're getting your messaging out there in front of the people who are gonna make the decisions. Um, I think a great example of this is uh, with kids, uh, the kids do not make the decisions. So you can tell the kids whatever you want and you can try to convince them of something. But uh, you know, with, with youth marketing and with, um, with the kids, you, you're targeting the parents. You have to get your messaging out there in front of them. because They're the ones actually um, getting them there, signing them up, um, kind of making those decisions for them. And then also, what can you latch on to locally and nationally? Um, there's a special day for everything now. There's a special month for everything. Um, some are, uh, some are you know, better causes than others. We're in the middle of a great one right now with uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. There's also, you know, National Hot Dog Day. That's not, um, you know, but there's always a day. There's always something trending or some hashtag going out there. You know, keep an eye on what that stuff is and think about how you can latch on to that. Um, and then just continuing on with this, with, with kind of rethinking your content is, you know, what's achievable? Um, it's, it can be intimidating. We all probably think I'd love to be here. I'd love to, you know, be posting stuff every day and have feature stories on our website and be on the news. It's just not, um, it's not a goal that can be usually achieved with all the stuff that you have to do. So kind of picking just one goal that you might have that you want to start with. Maybe it's updating the website. Maybe it's posting a video tip. Maybe it's um, redeveloping your email list as an organization or as a pro, but keeping your goals achievable, um, developing a schedule, creating a content calendar can be really helpful. So you don't have to think about what's getting put out there. Um, you can kind of have a plan. And then as mentioned, remembering your call to action. So at the end of something that you're publishing, or even at the end of, um, let's say you did get uh, a great media clip or a news piece that's um, somebody's coming out and interviewing you, what do you want to say on that to make sure that the people listening or watching know what to do next? So it's great that people get out there and can see you, but you really want them to then 
um, engage with you, visit your site, um, learn more information, uh, so on and so forth. So um, those are a few things from the content development standpoint. And then um, I believe Lauren, um, you're gonna go through a couple examples, specific examples of what that could look like. Right, so um, going off what Michael said, in the next few slides here, we're gonna be going over some, um, some examples of simple content development and generating some ideas that you can use or keep in the back of your mind. Um, so first off, you could feature junior players succeeding in local or national events, spotlighting volunteers that help your organization. Um, so we have a few examples here of some social media posts that on the uh, right hand side that Greater Pottstown Tennis and Learning used on their social media. They highlighted a junior player who succeeded academically and on the court, uh, while another time they featured a junior volunteer who worked with their adaptive tennis programs. These mm -hmm. are easy and effective ideas to highlight your great players, volunteers, your facility in general. Um, another thing you could do is even potentially featuring a, a league team. Um, they could be winning matches or going to a championship. It could be simple content. Um, maybe if you're a teaching pro uh, and you're coaching a team, this could be a great opportunity if for you to post about them, which could result in those players on that team sharing on their social media, which could lead to more exposure for that teaching pro. And then on the next slide, we have some more ideas. Um, like from the perspective of a teaching pro or even a provider is sharing some encore tips workouts, at-home drills, among other things that you can engage with your audience. So here on the, the top picture, you see uh, Frog Hollow doing a great job of simply featuring a, a picture of one of their teaching pros setting up tennis at home. It's fun, easy. They're engaging social media users and also having them submit their own videos at home. Um, more easy and effective ideas could possibly include previewing your special events or displaying your company news, not necessarily on social media. Um, but here we have Rodney Street um, Tennis. They provided, they provide newsletters, flyers, um, promoting special events. They hosted a virtual event in July that specifically highlighted their, their uh, silent auction as well. Now, I know these are only, um, they only cover a few examples for you and there also are many other ways for you to use your ideas and um, there's other ideas that you can use as well. But while you consider all of this content, it's also important not to forget the delivery of the content. So if you go to the next slide, we can see here that it's great if you have all the content and material to share, but if no one sees that material, then what's the point? So we just wanna remind you of how you can get your ideas out there. Um, there are a lot of people that default to social media, uh, which is a great outlet, but there are other opportunities, like I mentioned before, like newsletters, print direct mail, YouTube, your website, word of mouth. You can share all these stories and, and, on, and news on your channels, but doing it once or twice also won't just cut it. Um, the more they see your content, the more effective it will be. Um, so frequency, frequency is important to growing and maintaining uh, exposure and relevance. Um, Michael, do you have anything to add? I would just add, add to that point of, of frequency is it's, it's tough sometimes to strike a balance there because you sometimes hesitate to go on like long breaks of, oh, I haven't sent an email out in a while or we haven't, you know, posted something on this channel in a while. And sometimes you can get sucked into this trap of, publishing something, sending a note to a media member, updating, you know, uh, a post or, <laughs> excuse me, um, updating the website just to do it. Uh, maybe it's appeasing uh, a higher up, maybe it's something for, you know, for your board or, or it's just because you want to stay relevant, but making sure that you are posting with a purpose and that the stuff that you're publishing and putting out there has that like reasoning behind it. So you should be able to sit down and think every time you put something out, um, what was the goal behind this? What's the call to action? Uh, if, if I saw this as a customer, like what would I 
how would I engage with it? Would this make me click on this? Would this make me more interested in tennis? And when you start to ask yourself those questions, more than you realize, the answer becomes no. And you rethink how you might want to do it. Um, you ask questions, you kind of maybe work closer with the people um, you know, that you're closest with and you find better ways to go about these things. And we, we get caught in this just as much as anybody else, um, you know, trying to avoid that trap. So Lauren, that's it for you on content delivery, right? So we're going to move into, um, and I'm keeping an eye on the, the clock here again. I know people, um, we're going to run out of time here, but we're going to move quickly through um, a few PR um, tips and strategy uh, before doing a, a super quick demo of a uh, USTA tool that we have for you guys. But um, when it comes to media outreach, we got a couple questions about this. This could be a good exercise for you to do um, when we send these slides out is, you know, think locally around you. Um, what's relevant in your customer, in your market, in your target market. So, um, you know, whether it's TV, maybe you're a community that has a, a newsletter that's really popular, that's mailed monthly. Um, maybe you're still, you know, they still have a, a newspaper that is really popular, or maybe there's some great local digital stuff that is popular, um, you know, parenting blogs or travels, travel sites. Um, but thinking about your local out, um, outlets and identifying a few that you think your audience would be at. From there, start to build a really simple list. Go online, take a half hour and say, I'm going to get one or two contacts. And, you know, I'm going to learn where to submit a press release to NBC 10 or to you know, the Pittsburgh Tribune review or whatever that is. Once you start seeing that list and you start getting those links, sending information and reaching out to people becomes much, much easier. And then you can, to Sanjin's point, have one or two successes, start building relationships, and then have a person to go to when you have a big fundraiser or a great event coming up. And you can say, hey, listen, this is happening at our facility. We think it would be a great thing for you to come out and cover. You know, how would you like to come out, play some tennis and spend the day, you know, spend some time here. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, but um, starting with that list, you can really see that goal start to come to fruition. Um, develop a template uh, that's, that's standard for outreach. So if it's a press release that you're sending to a wide audience, keep that really um, buttoned up and, and looking official. We can help you with this. So if you're on this call, you need help coming up with a template for, for media releases or just trying to figure out how to get started, send us a message when we, when we send our follow-up and we can help you do that. Um, and then from there, just setting an achievable goal maybe for the month um, and give it a shot and see how that goes. Um, just want to check because I'm not seeing the chat. Um, Evan or Marge, um, have you seen if any questions have come through before we get into our demo here? Nope, no, no questions. So we're we're good on that front. Okay, cool. So we're gonna um, just run through a demo for a couple minutes here. Um, one thing we want to share is you, you're definitely seeing a, a different USTA uh, this year moving forward um, when it comes to organizations, when it comes to marketing. Um, one of these first things that, that hopefully you've learned about, and if not, we will be including this in our recap, is our tennis service center. Um, it's meant for, it's, it's meant just as it said, to be a service for our providers and for the people teaching our game. Um, inside that is our marketing generator, um, access to serve tennis tools, um, resource library with, with all sorts of assets. Um, you can access safe play, Tennis Industry United, which has had just a, a ton of really good, valuable best practices and updates, especially uh, with, with what everybody's gone through this year. Um, if you had not heard, organizational memberships to USTA will be free beginning in 2021. Um, we can get additional information to you on that. And then uh, really just can't stress this enough. That's why we're saying it. Uh, it seems like on every slide. Any other help that you might need, if there's ways that we can help you, um, reach out because uh, your local section office, that's what we're here for. I know most people on this call are from Middle States clubs, um, but I did see some from, from across the country. Um, your local section marketing person can help you with so many things and you know is 
we, we love hearing from, from teaching pros, from tennis directors, because being able to actually get out there and help them and help you guys in the field, uh, it's really impactful for us. So I'm going to give a quick, um, I'm going to share a different screen really quick as we uh, start to inch closer and closer to two o'clock. Um, and this is going to be our net generate, our, I'm sorry, the, our USTA marketing generator. Um, I still have the uh, net generation marketing generator uh, stuck in my head. So um, can everyone see the screen that I'm at right now? Yep, you're good. Yep. Cool. So we will have uh, information and instructions on, on signing in and how this can happen. But if you are a, an account holder with um, who's safe play approved, um, this is a tool that I think is really valuable that you'd all have access to. So USTA marketing generator. And once you log in here, you have a handful of things at your disposal here. Um, everything from gr brand guidelines to the ability to create um, assets for you to use digitally by, by print. Um, there's even uh, email templates that we have in here. But I just wanna show you the ease of this. Uh, we get every week, um, four or five providers reaching out for help designing a flyer or a postcard or something that they need <laughs> images for. Once you're inside the marketing generator, for example, if you wanted to create a postcard that either you were going to mail or just hand out somewhere, throw into a player bag, you can go ahead in here and let's just pretend we want to create something for an upcoming league. Again, I know this is a lot to keep up with at first. It's pretty self-explanatory, but these are things we can run you through on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You have editing capabilities here of all these different sorts of assets. So for example, um, you see a doubles team right here. You have all of this that just populated on the left, you know, 15, 16, 20 different images you could choose from. Okay, and then from a headline perspective, you know, um, you have the ability to change the headline and create all the information that you need, both front and back. So um, the front, as we just created for the tennis conference, sign up now, and then you'd be able to do the same thing over on the back here, which is type in subheadings. Um, just typing in some random copy, but then you could put in all the details um, about your facility, your programs, your event. Um, and then here at the bottom right of the screen, the ability to save, um, download. We could spend an hour inside this tool. Um, our, at the national level, our organization did a really amazing job um, developing this tool and this technology for, <coughs> for our providers. Um, like I said, there's postcards, there's posters, there's email templates, there's social media graphics, and it can all be customized um, to you. And you also have the ability to upload your own logo to this too. So, um, you know, if you don't have a, a big fancy marketing department who you know, has the Adobe Creative Suite and is developing uh, graphics and assets for you, would highly suggest this. We would be happy to run you through, even on a one-on-one -on -one basis, how to use it um, easier and how to, you know, get stuff printed or how to save it in the best format for you to, to move forward um, and share it out on your other assets. So, I know we are getting close here to 155. Um, it's 155. We're getting close to two o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and um, stop sharing my screen, but um, if there are any questions, if there's anything that we missed, Evan or Marge, that, that came through the chat, we can address some of those things and go from there. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I does not look like we've missed anything. Um, for, for those of you who are wanting to know the link and where to find the marketing generator, I just posted it in the chat. Um, it's part of our what's called our Tennis Service Center, which is uh, one of, uh, it's, a, it's basically a huge resource library um, for people who are Safe Play approved. And it also gives you more information about the Safe Play um, approval process. But uh, if, you can, if you click on the link over to the side, it'll bring you to the uh, Tennis Service Center and you can access the marketing generator from there. Uh, like Michael said, it is 
Uh, you must be Safe Play approved and, and have a USTA account, but it's 100% free to go and, and create the and create your your templates and all that stuff. So there's a lot of a lot of great stuff there. Um, and like I said, um, sorry to interrupt, Evan. Like I said, yeah. there's there's so much in that tennis service center that uh, it's really worth going in and clicking around. Um, a lot of you have have tools already, but you know the Serve Tennis suite of tools you can, is available there. Um, there's there's so many other things that uh, no matter how engaged you are with USTA, it's really helpful as providers. So um, appreciate everybody going in and just clicking through and providing any feedback. So I think from our end, Evan, that's we're we're in pretty good shape. We're good. If you want to uh, just kind of close us out here, I know we've only got a minute or two to go. Awesome. Well, Michael, Lauren, I uh, can't thank you guys enough. Uh, you know, I know marketing is something that I think just about every organization, whether you're a CTA, NJTL, private club, has has to really you know have their hand in to uh, to really grow their business. So it's it's great to have all this stuff here. Um, the session is recorded, so we can send this out to anybody who uh, who who has any other uh, who has any questions or would like to to send this along to anybody else who was not on the call. Uh, but but Michael and Lauren, I'd like to uh, thank you guys both for uh presenting this is uh this is great this is super helpful super informative uh and especially getting the 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 word out of all the stuff that uh usta can help all these uh all, all you guys with um but uh you know with with that being said i don't think we have any more questions here so i'd like to give michael and lauren the, the last word if you guys if you guys have anything else before i close uh be clo before i close everything out here I think we're good, right, Lauren? We're good. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Well, uh, with that, uh, the tennis conference presented by USTA Middle States has come to a close. This has been uh, extremely fun and extremely exciting for us. Uh, we've done this for three weeks. If, uh, in case anybody has been uh, been following along with us for that for that amount of time. Um, I'd like to take this time to thank everyone who was able to uh, attend one or many of our sessions, as well as the presenters, the panelists, and the Middle State staff who worked on this project. It definitely was a team effort uh, all the way through. We've been working on this for months, and it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a lot of fun doing. Uh, we, we've had over 500 unique registrations and over 1,400 overall attendees at our over 20 sessions, uh, and we certainly hope that you enjoyed the tennis conference as much as we did. Early next week, we'll be sending out a survey asking about different aspects of the tennis conference. And we'll also be sharing with you um, all, the, uh, all the information that we presented over the past few weeks, including recorded sessions, contact information, and follow-up info. Um, it'd be great to hear feedback from everybody. So if anybody has any questions, uh, you know, feel free to, to email me or, or let any of us know. Um, while the conference is now complete, we don't want anybody to, to lose out on keeping in touch with us. So please, please stay in touch and reach out if there's anything that any of us can help you with. Um, we love working with all of you and we can do uh, whatever we can to connect you guys with, with, uh, with what you're doing on the field. And again, thank you so much for attending the sessions at the tennis conference. Could not have been done without everybody's drive to learn more about this great sport and how we can better service our tennis communities all over the country. So with that... I'm going to stop recording and